my first thought is going to be uh, a continuation of what we've said about the Dolphins all year. And can this game be different? Um, and what I mean by can this game be different is uh, the Dolphins have failed their all their test games this year. They've gotten an F. They've been really bad. They got blown out by Buffalo. Uh, they got outplayed by Philadelphia. Had a pick six to make that game kind of close. Philadelphia was able to move the ball a lot on them in that Sunday night game. So they've stepped up in class uh, and they failed. And they've done it multiple times. And for not the last time this year, but really, maybe really the last time this year, like against like a really, really, really like the best team, uh, they have an opportunity to like kind of show on tape why they could maybe win the Super Bowl or maybe win the AFC. This might be their last chance to do that. And I'm curious if they can do it. Despite Kansas City losing to Denver and looking terrible in the process, turning the football over a million times, Mahomes and the offense looking as bad as they've looked basically since he's been the quarterback, just like a brutal game for Kansas City. Uh, there, there, there can be no questioning that Kansas City still an elite team in the National Football League and representing elite competition for the Miami Dolphins. So the point spread in the market, and again, this is on a neutral field in Germany. Kansas City's a two and a half point favorite. The total is 50 and a half. So Ken, your early thoughts, analysis, any bets here for Kansas City and Miami, pen, pencil, blood, or blank? Yeah, we, we closed last hour for people that didn't see it on stadium. And I, I brought up that point that just Philadelphia and Buffalo didn't go well for Miami. And they especially didn't go well defensively. Um, you know, the offense, well, I, no one would call it electric against Buffalo and Philadelphia like it had been in the other games. Remember, they scored 70 points, obviously, against the Denver Broncos. Feels like forever ago, but that was this season. Um, you know, ran up the score on a couple other teams, had a bunch of games that have gone over this year. But against Buffalo and against Philadelphia, weren't, weren't quite able to do that. And I think almost more importantly, the defense just like couldn't hold up in those games like at, at all buffalo scored at will in the game philadelphia was able to move the ball a ton in the game and so i guess you're looking at this kansas city offense albeit off of a really bad performance to your point but look like i think our baseline level of expectation for a mahomes offense and let's also remember you know can't gloss over the fact like did have the flu yesterday it was 20 degrees that was a team that he had just faced a few weeks before i don't think there's a lot about that game or a lot about like the Dolphins game this past week against the Patriots that's going to tell you what this game is going to be like. Like the conditions are, I, you know, you would think would be a little bit more ideal. Mahomes would probably be feeling better. Uh, I, I think if you're trying to figure out like how how can the Dolphins do something that they haven't done yet this year, beat a good team, how can they do that? Uh, I think your answer would probably be get a good injury report on defense and hope that like Jalen Ramsey continues to like take steps forward and play like the maximum number of steps. Like remember Ramsey didn't play against Buffalo. Ramsey didn't play against Philadelphia. Maybe like that's the Trump card. As long as other players aren't like Xavier and Howard going to play in the game is Holland going to play in the game. Like they've been at half of a defense so far. So if it's a half a defense and it's just Ramsey and like, you know, four backups against Mahomes, that's, that's not going to go great in a game where the chiefs just have to win to cover the number. So, you know, like, would want the Dolphins defense to be at full strength before I'd ever think about playing them. I don't think the number's crazy. My number's two and a half, two. It's on a neutral field. I don't think it's probably going to be a full three with how Kansas City looked yesterday. Um, but until, like, I think honestly, like, until the Dolphins show you they can do that in this kind of a game, I, I don't know if you can bet them at these kind of small numbers. And they've been a small number in both games that they played against those teams. To be fair, like it's so early in the week, like I, I don't have my German weather report handy for what this is going to be like either. This is, is this an this is an outdoor stadium they're playing at? I'm guessing. Like I to be like, well, you should know that. Be like, well, I don't really need to know it yet, but I'm going to need to know it by the end of the week. Um, <laughs> Correct. That would just you know be like we're doing. Wait, wait, wait till we give you our handicap for like a Anaheim and Pittsburgh tonight of the National Hockey League. We're going to yeah. have you covered. Don't worry. I, don't worry. We got. Well, you. you're just asking if the first if the first digits are five, and I'm like, look if the if the conditions are ideal. Uh, and you have these two rated offenses like I, you mentioned that the Chiefs offense isn't explosive and you're right. Um, what I worry about in this game for the Dolphins, and it's the same thing as the Chargers game and the Bills game and the Eagles game is the Chiefs are not explosive, but they also are very, 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 very good at converting third downs still. And obviously that's all like Mahomes and his ability to create plays, uh, you know, keep plays going, all that kind of stuff. And I just worry about like the same thing in the, from the Eagles game, the same thing from the Bill. It just... Like, are you going to get the Chiefs off the field ever? Like, are you going to do that? You couldn't really get the Eagles off the field. You could never get the Bills off the field in the game. Like, it just starts with that. Can you get the Chiefs off the field? Like, I don't care what two is going to do. And they, they can't, if they can't get the other team off the field ever, then I don't care because this point spread's small. Like, yeah, if you're a touchdown dog in a game, then I might care. Like, or I might, you know, do something else. Like, I might think of the game a different way if uh if the point spread was different but like you have to win the game so just like if if one half you're just fundamentally flawed then and that's been the case and you can look at all like like the dolphins are on track still 
to really like set a bunch of records offensively in the NFL this year. Obviously, Tyreek Hill's on pace to break 2,000 yards receiving. Two is an insanely efficient passer. He's probably going to break records at the end of the year for a lot of pass metrics. Like, we'll see how that goes. All that being said, like, you know, okay, cool. If you're like 13th in defense, that's okay. But if you're like 20s in a bunch of stuff and you play teams like this, that's why the test games go so poorly. So I, they have an opportunity to look different. Maybe with Ramsey, that's what it is. It doesn't make me want to bet anything um, with the, the point spread being this and us being in a neutral field. But, you know, if you're like, hey, you have to bet the game and it's less than three, like, I'm going to bet they fail the test again. Like, that's what I'm going to bet. And, uh, and you know, I'll be curious to see if it plays out the same way with Ramsey now in the picture. Like, we don't know what's really going on with James Harden. They, like, don't let him on the plane, and then he's at the home opener, but, like, seems like a trade is the most likely avenue there. I think they kind of look awesome without him, and part of them looking awesome is that Tyrese Maxey has really, like, kind of taken a step forward, it seems like, to being a really good player. No player in basically any award market has moved from the start of the season to now more than Tyrese Maxey has moved for most improved player. He's almost two to one in some places now to be most improved player as a result of getting off to such a good start. So just like your thoughts on the Sixers, I think a really interesting team this year. And then Maxi, a player that I know you really like. Yeah, I think my biggest concern all summer, and I said this a few times, was that Daryl Morey never wants to trade a star unless he gets a star back. But this seemed like a situation to me where the star you get back is just an increased usage load for Tyrese Maxey. I think you just have to get James Harden out of here so we stop talking about him, get him out of the press conferences, get everybody focused on basketball. And my hope was that they would trade him kind of just for two guys. I mean, the Bulls have been pulled into conversations. If we could get Patrick Williams and DeMar DeRozan, something like that, that's fine. You know, we don't really need another superstar just other couple guys to sort of fit together on this team and then really see what you could do with Tyrese Maxey and Embiid Embiid is still incredible a little concerned about his effort level but it's early in the season I'm sure he'll be locked in especially as they start winning games but I agree I love Maxey I bet him as soon as MIP opened got some really nice numbers there and you know maybe plus 200 is a little short for this part of the season but until further notice he should be the favorite for that award Great. We'll take Joel Embiid and his uh, lack of effort. We'll take him on the New York Knicks like today. So pl please, like he can come and he can loaf at Madison Square Garden. And I'll be very happy about that. Games that are five and a half or five rarely stay there. There's sort of like a good way to think about it. I've done this on the show before. There's a, a magnetic pull on the number three and a magnetic pull on the number seven. And if you're anywhere between those two numbers, you kind of end up getting sucked one way or another. You get magnetically drawn toward three or towards that. Which one is it going to be? Are we going to go back down or are we going to go up? We, it almost never stays here, right? Like think about the Bengals Niners game. We started started five, five and a half. We bounced back and forth. We ended up going way back down again. Just which, which way are we more likely to go here? My guess would be up based on how Baltimore has played the last couple of weeks. That might create a bet on Seattle. That's probably the only way I'm thinking about playing the game. If you could either have one of the two following powers, you could have the power of magnetism like Magneto and control metal like Magneto does. Right, or magnetic pretty fields. badass superpower. Magnetic right. fields. Yeah. Or you could have the ma the ability to magnetically move numbers wherever you want that open in the dead zone, either to three or seven, and then bet the other side for as much money as you could bet. Which would you rather have? The ability to control magnetic fields and metal, or you could be like, okay, I think that this point spread should be seven, and then you could bet Seattle if you think that number's right, for example. So, like, do I want to go outside and, like, control a giant truck and lift it up in the air over my head and swing it around? Or do I want to be like, well, it'd be better if the Patriots were two and a half. Like, that'd be a little <laughs> bit better. Like, I, 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 in the short term, like, I'm going to pick the cool the cool superhero one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Like, I think I'm, I think I'm good with that. Also, like... Even if I moved these numbers to things I thought were like good bets for me, there, there's no guarantee that I'm right or smart or would win. Whereas when I pick up the truck, like I picked up the truck, I did that. I can put it wherever I want because I have those powers. That's pretty cool. Like, oh, like I like I want a fork from upstairs to eat my dinner. King, and it just appears in my hand right now. It'd be pretty good. Yeah, like I, look, I, I'd love to be able to move point spreads, but uh, you're going to give me the powers of Magneto who just is kind of almost like an OP superhero. Like magnetic fields is a pretty cool thing to be able to control versus like most superhero abilities you could have. Just on the Giants and this game against the Jets yesterday, which set offensive football back to the Mesozoic era. I mean, just like made one of the worst offensively played football games you will ever watch. More punts than total points scored in the game. First time that's happened, Ken, since 1991. 24 punts combined in the game from the Giants and Jets. 23 points scored. 
13 by the Jets, and of course, 10 by the New York Football Giants. And this is not like a New York show, so I'll try and be really quick here, but I think, you know, people will want to hear my opinion of this, and I kind of like, I found myself, like, I, I tilted this to the degree that I actually, like, missed doing things in fantasy football and, like, bets for the second slate of games that I wanted to place because I was so tilted. I was in orbit from the end of this Giants-Jets game yesterday. And, like, where Brian Dable, like, last year we loved Brian Dable, right? Brian Dable by making all the right moves. Week one against Tennessee, going for two, setting the tone for the season where the Giants overachieve big time, go to the divisional round, get waxed by the Eagles. But, hey, man, coach of the year, gets the team to the playoffs, resurrection of this once-proud franchise. We're all feeling really good about Brian Dable. And then this season starts. And it's like, what the hell is this guy doing? And they've been playing better the last couple of weeks. But, like, we love Dable. And me specifically, I love Dable because the in-game decision-making was absolutely nails. He was always making the right calls. Brian Dable, in opposition to Joe Judge and Pat Shermer and Ben McAdoo, would coach games to win as opposed to to not to lose. So someone tell me what the hell this dude was thinking out there. And Ken, you texted me during the game and I got a good laugh. I think you wrote me, Brian Dable looks ridiculous. Like in the rain. This like is a the, blue like the, jacket. Like, like it's just yeah. all like, can, can you, like you can get away looking like that, like a slouch. You can get away looking like that when you win. When you're losing, you just look like a fool, Brian Dable. Just looks terrible. So someone tell me how. 10-7 at the end of the game. And I understand it's the third string quarterback and they literally, they actually literally can't pass. I, I get it. I get it. Fourth and one at the 18 with a, with a kicker who's hurt and everyone knows he's hurt to the point that I almost like when, and I respect and like a lot of these people, I know some of them personally, the Giants beat writers on Twitter who after Gano misses the kick early in the game are like, well, actually, Gano's not healthy. To which I'm like, okay, then why is he active? Like, if everyone, if it's an open secret that the kicker's left leg is, his plant leg is injured, why is he kicking? What, why is, why do they not, yeah, or release him! Get someone in there that can do the job. It just makes, it makes no sense, and the excuse is being made, well, well, actually, he's not healthy. Well, instead of, like, making that point that the kicker's not healthy, how about asking the question why he's active in the game? So, like, if this were, like, automatic Graham Gano, like, okay, 35 yards, make it a six-point game, like, I get it. Like, if Justin Tucker were the kicker, Adam Vinatieri were the kicker, I'd understand it. But here's gimpy-legged Graham Gano, who's missed a couple kicks the last couple weeks, who, that the, 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 everyone's saying isn't healthy. And, of course, predictably, he shanks it instead of going for fourth and one where Saquon Barkley got 36 carries in the game. Go get one yard and win the damn football game. Get one yard and win the damn game. Go do it, Brian Dable. Be a man. Coach to win, not not to lose. And then here, of course, Zach Wilson drives them down the field, field goal. And then in overtime, like, the, I, I am sitting there praying, please, please let the Jets win this toss and receive the kick in overtime. Because if the Giants win and receive, the game's over. Because they can't, they literally are not going to get a first down. They're going to punt, and it's sudden death, and the Jets are going to have the ball in good field position. You got to defer. The Jets have to get the ball first. Like, it's insane to me that, like, the Giants want to start things on offense. Like, with Tommy, it's a Tommy De Vito, baby. So I think Brian Dable lost the game yesterday. Season's over. Season's over. And the coach who last year couldn't make one single solitary mistake now can't get one elementary single solitary decision right. 